What's up, brothers? Welcome back to another one. Nate's not ready to do an intro, so I'm doing it for him. Timing belt. Volvo V70R, S60R, V70, S60, all the same platforms. Anything with a five-cylinder Volvo of this era. There we go. What era? 2000s. P2. I think P1s are pretty similar, too. Let's get after P5. it. Bring your car in, get it situated. We're using a lift, makes everything much easier. You could do it on the ground, you do have to pull the wheel to get to some parts, but we're gonna do it on a lift because we have that All right, next step. We wanna get all of the kind of stuff in the way, out of the way for the timing belt. So I'm just gonna pull it out of the way. We will need this because this is the timing marks. Let me zoom in on those. That's one, that's another timing mark. So you will need this before you're done. Next, we want to take this off. Um, you could take, there's a nut down here and a bolt, or you could just do the four bolts. There's two on each side, the 14s, and then the one that goes through here, and it's a 14 and a 16. I'm gonna use this very nice Milwaukee. This thing is the tits, if you didn't know. I don't know a part number, but somebody will link it in the description. It'll take off caliper bolts. It's got like 220 foot pounds. Get one. That's more than this car. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> no, it's not. That has not been confirmed yet. I don't know. <laughs> this. Put that out of the way. Next step, we want to get these two out of the way so we can access the timing belt. And this unclips from there. And then make sure your cap is on. Mine looks like it's leaking, so that will be getting replaced someday soon. I probably should have got one. I don't need to do that yet. I'm gonna get a bunch of water. Take this overflow off. These little things, you need a special tool to Crimp them. I don't have it. And we have a wall of hose clamps, so we're not going to reuse this one. So put a one back on it. You want to plug this so it doesn't leak anything. All right, here's the plug. That I'm going to go with. Stick it on there so nothing leaks. So for stuff like this, this temporary, I just stick a bolt in it. That way it won't leak. This is the level sensor. This leaf. This plug right here, so we want to unplug that so we'll get more room. Unplug that. And this can go underneath of here and get this. Actually, it's fine to stay over here. Not gonna hurt anything. All right, then we have access to this. Next step, there's a single 10 mil in the middle of this cover. So we're gonna take that off. If I can find it, kind of. Finger around till you find the hole. Down the hole. Angular 10. And this should just lift back off and out. Oh. Boom. There's your timing belt cover. Ooh, it looks kind of pretty. R specific. It's blue. The other ones are black. For the next couple steps, we're going to show you on this engine just because it's right here. This one, I know we didn't say anything, but it has a cracked sleeve. Just a spare part tension for me. This is the serpentine belt tensioner, and it's a T60. And that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and it's gonna release tension. Now would be a great time to replace your serpentine belt. Uh, I am gonna blame Corlin on this one. He forgot to tell me to order one, so. You didn't ask me to. So, uh, yeah. I will not be replacing it, but I will be replacing it soon-ish. All right, serpentine belt's off. Doesn't need to come off of the AC compressor, so we're just gonna leave it. Next step is we're gonna get it up on the air, we're gonna set it up on the lift. You guys can just jack it up, take this tire off, and uh, I'll show you when we get there. Next step, now that you got your wheel off, is 
metal cover thing to 10 mil plastic nuts. You want to get a pair of needle nose vice grips, regular vice grips work. But you see this crease right here? Yeah. That sure is a crease. This crease, we're going to fold this right on the crease. Just get your vice grips. And that'll keep it out of your way enough yeah. to do what you need. Next step, we're going to take the balancer off. It is four 10 mils and a 30 mil in the center. That was extra crusty. Don't forget to spray down your bolts. You don't want to break one of these bad boys. Don't even say that. Don't even think that, Corbin. I thought it. Can't take that back. Get it, son! You found your dad, now get it! Those four. Standard size is a one and three sixteenths. Hammer time. Just make sure you don't break it when you're hammering it. Yeah, gently. You could use a rubber mallet too, but I have a hammer. I'm not being gentle with it. Back and forth. Just enough to where you get some play. Alright, I wiggled it a lot. I got it loose. Just took some back and forth. So my uh, Just took some nice foreplay. Yeah. And then she comes off. You can see it was probably stuck on this dowel on the crank. So I'm gonna take a wire brush and wire that off. Alright, now we're gonna put this top cover back on. It'll clip in place. That and that will give us our timing marks. So you can see somebody has actually marked it with white. And there's a, a dot on that one. <laughs> After I took the balancer off, I just put the nut gently back on there, enough to where it's seated all the way. It's not gonna hurt anything. As long as you don't run it on, you should be fine like that. That's how I'm gonna do it so I can see. And then come up here now. I'm gonna spin it over clockwise, always. You never wanna go counterclockwise. We'll have to go counterclockwise. Uh, you can slip the belt because it's not made to go that way. And then you kinda of SOL. It looks like we got it. It looks like these are lined up, but down on the crank, there isn't a mark. So we're actually 180 out. So we're gonna have to spin it over a whole nother time. That looks good to me. Let's go over to our demonstration engine and we'll show you what I'm looking for on the bottom. We'll just imagine, because we can't film this, but whatever. There's two little notches on two of these teeth and then there's a groove on the outside of the teeth. You want to go in between these teeth right here. So now that that's all lined up, you can safely take your belt off. Um, there's a couple ways you could take a tensioner off. The way I'm gonna do it is, see this little, this is something, I couldn't even tell you what it actually does, but it's, it'll release slack on the uh, tensioner. So you can get two hands in there, pull it over sideways. We got it off. And then the belt slips off. I'm gonna go down and take it off. We're gonna show you on this one what to take off and what to do. It's way easier to see. There are two bolts, one, two, for this tensioner, or idler, whatever you wanna call it. So one. Uh, two, and that comes off like that. Again, we're gonna be doing it on that engine, but this is just demonstrative. And then this one, just a singular one in the center. And the whole thing comes off. Then, next step, highly recommended to change your water pump while you're in there. Um, 
we didn't talk about this, but I got a whole kit from FCP Euro. It was everything, coolant, water pump, tensioner, bolts, timing belt, not that expensive. It's all the best stuff, so there are seven, sorry I had to count, there are seven 10 mils around the side of the water pump. Water pump might be a little sticky to come out. I'm just gonna give it a little tap. The hammer, we're replacing it anyway, so. I took all the bolts out for the water pump, and I didn't pull a radiator hose or drain anything ahead of time because I knew that I could just put a bucket underneath and catch most of it. Um, so it's under there, caught the coolant, and then pop the water pump out. Just like that. Boom. Boom! Nice water That's pump. familiar. It's like that model over there is the exact same engine you have. Yeah, almost. Yeah. And this one doesn't feel bad, but... While you're in there, you might as well replace there. it. So, this is a genuine Volvo water pump. It's made by a company called Azen. I went directly to Azen and bought the water pump because it's cheaper from them than it is from actually Volvo. And you can see all they do is they grind off the Volvo. <laughs> you see that? They literally the exact same water pump, same part number on it, same little dial thing, whatever that means. It's just they grind off the Volvo. So, That's I thought that was funny. so dumb. Yeah, I think it's pretty dumb actually. It's hilarious, but dumb at the same time. All right, so now we've taken everything off of this engine. I'll show you, these are the old ones, crusty. They don't really feel bad, but I had no history on when the timing belt was done last. So for the next uh, upgrades we're doing, I wanted to have a fresh timing belt. Basically stage zero of the car before I make any real power. One thing to note, Make sure that there are different styles for different like serial numbers of engines. I called the dealer and got my serial number off the bin and they were able to tell me what I needed. Um, make sure this, so this spins. You see, I can't do it on this one, but this one. This spins, moves around. It's easy to do it with an Allen key or just your hands. Make sure that the new one and the old one, you line them up because different years will go in different spots. I just line it up with the new one, line it up with the old one, the new one. We got the new one, brand new gasket. Some gaskets will be sticky on one side so you can stick it to this and then put it on. It has dowels in the engine so I'm gonna stick it on the engine first and then put the water pump over it. Stuck the gasket on there. Um, coolant is still dripping out, but it's not going to hurt anything once it seals up. It should be fine. So, this. Uh, kit from FCP Euro came with new water pump bolts. Um, I'm going to look up the torque spec for them, but if they gave them to me, I'm going to use them because they must, they should be replaced. They already came with a Loctite on them, or maybe that's just thread sealer. Not sure, but. All right. Timing belt tensioner. When you put it in, it sits in between these two little grooves. And then you tighten the bolt down. That's just, keep it lines. You don't want to put it in there like this or like upside down. It goes in like that. And if you have an older engine, I think it mounts a little bit differently, so make sure you check that before you, uh, don't do it this way if it's wrong. But. Okay, comparison, new belt. Old belt, you can see when I bend it, the new one doesn't crack at all. The old one is cracking. This one probably had some life left in it, um, but normally the belts aren't the first thing to go. It's the tensioners that the bearings wear out and they go, they all felt good. Again, it probably didn't need it. Probably would have been good for another 20,000 miles. But... Next step, before you put the belt on, make sure nothing moved because while you were doing the water pump tension or whatever, you could have bumped it. Make sure nothing moved, saves you a lot of hassle later, and an engine, possibly. 
So that looks good. That looks good. So we've got it seated on the crank down here. I don't know if Ari's gonna show that. Can you see that? I'm kind of just holding it. Kind of. Let me come down here with you. So it's gotta go under this little thing and, and around the, and the back side of this. And once we get it seated up in there, it doesn't really need to sit on the teeth, but just so it's up in there, then you can come back up top. So that is the routing. It goes around the crank, around the tensioner. This is the water pump, the exhaust camshaft, intake cam, and outlet pulley. So it looks like uh, kind of a middle finger, maybe. So same way I took it off, we're gonna pull on that. I think it's something for heat. It expands and contracts with heat. I don't know, but it helps you relieve tension so you can get the belt on and off. So we're gonna pull it over with my finger. All right, so we took this cover off because we know it's lined up and it's not moving. So it makes it way easier to get the belt on. You wanna make sure that this intake side where the belt runs is as tight as you can get it because there's no tensioner here. It's only an idler. So if you have a bunch of slack here, you either won't get the belt on or it'll be off a tooth and when it spins it over, get down straight. Now we are gonna get some vice grips and you don't wanna pinch the belt too hard. It's just to hold the belt there so it doesn't move on you. What just happened? We, it was wild. It was wild. Done did it. How? How did we get that on the backside? We got it looped around here with the vice grips, followed it down, got it tight on the crank pulley, had it seated on here. I held it with my hand here, and I used one hand to release the tension from the tensioner, and then Ari was able to kind of both at the same time, but more this first, and then this, get it to seat on this. And this can spin, it doesn't matter where that is, obviously. And then you just kind of push them both on at the same time. Now, we are going to, everything's on, everything's tight. We are going to put this back on, check our lines first, and then make sure you check all your marks. Looks good. We're gonna spin it over. Bingo. Okay, these have a lot of compression for some reason, so I'm out of breath. But we spun it over twice, three times, a bunch of times. And now we're gonna check our marks again. Make sure we line up. Lined up, lined up, and lined up. Oh, so we did it right. Success! Now just put everything back together and you're done. Now we are going to take off the nut that we put on just to spin the engine over. And this gun has enough that I'm just probably gonna blip it and it wasn't very tight. So if you're worried about it, spinning or something, you could put the bolts in here and do the screwdriver or a pry bar, hold that, and then take it off that way. But this was not on very tight, it was just by hand. Now, we have the balancer we're gonna put on. Came from that engine, but it looked better than mine, so we're gonna use it. And there is one dowel that sticks out. The dowel is right there. So just make sure you line the dowel up with the hole. Put your nut on. And then tighten it. All right, so I had mentioned earlier about serial numbers for the engines. Some of the older ones are different. Some of the newer ones are different. This is where your serial number would be. My sticker is missing. <laughs> Again, 260,000 miles, who knows? How would you be able to check if you don't have a sticker? So there are two ways to tell. You can call the dealer and give them your VIN, and our dealer was really nice. He looked it up, told me, no issues there. But that's only if you're sure that the engine is original to the car. I just kind of took a guess. I'm assuming this is original, but you don't know. But if not, you can. So this is the number one cylinder, timing belt's over here, the back of the head, or the back of the block, there is the serial number, and then right above it, if it's an R, it'll say B5254T. If it's a T5, it'll say B5244T24, so on and so on. And if you're looking at it on the car, it'll be right yeah, behind in, in here. 
Underneath the valve, behind on the valve cover. Yeah. Underneath the exhaust manifold. Yep, you'd have to have the head off to be able to see it. Uh, Rain, right. but you can. Or a bar scope. Yeah, a bar scope would make it real nice. Yeah. It was quite the fight, people. But what had to happen is he was underneath on the tensioner there. It was very tough, but you really need to get the slimmest tools you can of a T60 so that you can get in there because the AC line's right above it and obviously the frame rail. But what we did is we left it off the top one here and uh, I don't know Nate's password. And here's the belt routing. The one on the right is our specific belt routing on this car. If yours has the extra pulley, uh, then the is. other one. Some model. Yeah, some other model. So we're not sure, but this is definitely the one that we used here. So we had to follow that and we left the top power steering pulley out of play. Or the, we left it for the last one. So as he tensioned it from the bottom, we got the last one on here and just made sure everything was lined up. And that was good to go. So now we pull off our push rips. We fold this down. Make sure that that sits on there. And then we get our plate. With our nuts. My plate has been rubbed through. <laughs> but who cares? Does. And one of the most important things, don't forget to fill your car up with coolant because the water pump was off and you lost a bunch. So top her off. And this is the final piece to the puzzle. We're about to start it up and see if she runs proper, which we already checked time, so it will. Moment of truth. Double checking, making sure we have everything done on there. Needs an oil change. Fire this bad boy out. Oh, wait, what happened? You messed up? I wrote 160 for some reason when it's got 260 on it. <laughs> Don't forget the most important part of your I paid $4 for this sticker. <laughs> Alright, well that's gonna wrap this up guys. I hope you guys like the install and I hope it gave you all the information that you were looking for with doing this install. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. We answer every single comment. And like, don't forget to like the video. That helps us out a lot. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to see some more maintenance, the front mount's coming next. Stay tuned, and we will see you on the next one.